Pastoral 21 is a collaborative venture between government and industry aimed at providing simple, proven, profitable approaches to lift pastoral production and reduce nutrient loss. One program is a $1.6 million research project looking at how profits on hill country sheep farms can be improved in the wake of easier land being converted to dairying. Beef and Lamb New Zealand and Ag Research are involved in trials, one of which is on Andrew and Nicky Newton's sheep and beef farm near Cheviot. Beef and Lamb is part of a partnership family, I suppose you call them, where we um, join together with government to invest collaboratively in the pastoral sector across a range of projects. This is focusing on hill country. What we've seen in particular the last seven to ten years is a shift of um, uh, farming for sheep and beef more into the hill country. So we need to actually understand more about what we can do to improve the pasture types and pasture quality on the hill country. This is a five year program. We're now into our second year and the life of the project uh, is uh, just under $5 million for Beef and Lamb New Zealand and that is matched with government funding through that process. But there is also Fonterra, Dairy NZ, uh, the Dairy Cooperative um, Association of New Zealand that also collectively invest uh, alongside government uh, in this project as well. Yeah, it's looking good, so it's come through a reasonable sort of North Canterbury drought, but not a, not a severe drought. And we're now looking at some good autumn growth. The main objective of the trial or experimental work that we're carrying out at the moment is to look to see whether we can improve the quantity and quality of forage grown on uncultivatable hill country. It's become extremely important in the last 20 years as the sheep and beef industry has moved away from the better class of land, been taken over by dairy and lifestyle blocks, and the sheep and beef industry has moved into harder and harder country and progressively going into harder country still. So the objective of all sheep and beef farmers, uh, particularly in the sheep component of that industry, is to finish as many of their lambs to satisfactory weights as they can because the store market is diminishing very rapidly and to make an economic farm, they need to be able to complete the job as much as they can themselves. So to do that, they need to be able to finish those lambs on land classes that historically were store class country. What we're looking at here is what new technology is available and particularly what new plant species are available because historically New Zealand has been a ryegrass white clover uh, pastoral economy and they have done very very well on our better class of country. But we're now looking at classes of land that don't necessarily suit that ryegrass white clover mentality. 540 hectares effective. One of our weaknesses here was getting a good number of lambs away off mum at weaning time and I just yeah wanted to um, increase my weaning weight hence putting the lucerne in but I also wanted to find out if there was a better way of uh, introducing legumes on the hill country and that's what some of this trial works about. Originally when we came here we had just over 100 beef cows. Yeah, out of the five years that we'd been here I'd just seen them away grazing for three of those years and it just, under the system I was running, it wasn't working. So I um, switched to carryover cows because of the flexibility with them. And in the dry time, you know, with a beef cow you've got a calf on them, the carryover cow, you could push a bit, the, they're in calf by then, and it just suited my system. And when we put the irrigation on here in 2009, that was when I got the dairy heifers on here. I lamb my hoggets on this. Obviously after weaning, a lot of the lambs go away as store. And then the dairy heifer calves come on sort of the end of December. And so they theoretically tidy up the worms and then back with the hoggets lambing again in the spring. And these dairy heifer calves go back to the owner in August, so that allows me to lamb my hoggets. On the hill we run 2100 ewes and 100 carryover cows and then in the autumn these dairy heifers here flick around in front of the ewes till about beginning of May and then they um, go on onto a crop. I've got 25 hectares of lucerne in up the hill at the moment and um, looking to put another 20 hectares in with a view to uh, trying to yeah, finish as many lambs off mum as possible. Um, but at the moment we probably get 
20% away off mum and the balance away as stores. Um, and I'd yeah, like to have all my lambs gone by sort of the end of February. We're uh, midway up through the farm and this is the sort of country here that I'm looking to get more legumes and more lucerne up the hill further on the easier country that I can get a tractor over. Obviously you don't fatten lambs on brown topping, so um, yeah, hopefully we get some good information out of these trials. So here we've got one of the red clovers. Uh, There's a, a prostrate red clover and it's showing a lot of promise and uh, you can already see here from its little plant how it's spread out and covering a, a large... Nearly all the hill country in New Zealand is nitrogen deficient and if we think about our overall objectives of improving quantity in the late winter early spring and quality in the late spring summer legumes are the key to that a to provide the quality and also provide the nitrogen for the grass so what we're looking at in this particular trial is what other legume species apart from white clover will actually fit into these environments. So we have 30 or 35 different legume species in here uh, planted out of single plants because a lot of the uh, seed lines are right at very much at the plant breeding stage where we actually only have numbers of seeds let alone grams of seeds. So they're planted out of single plants, we're looking at how well they survive, how they reseed because that's important because the farmer can't keep on reseeding this, it's too expensive to do that and what their production is over time. This plot here was sown 12 months ago. We've been measuring it and scoring it right through to 12 months and that will carry on. Uh, there are 33 different legume species in here from the controls of white clover, new lines of white clover, new lines of red clovers, lotuses. One of the species that's looking really promising in here is a white clover Caucasian hybrid. So we're taking the hopefully those good parts of the Caucasian, its, it's rooting system, its persistence. Uh, we know that Caucasian was not so good at establishment and was certainly a very poor seed producer. So when we cross it with, with white clover, we hope to keep some of the good points of Caucasian, but also pick up some of the value of the white clover. From these 33, there might be three or four of the species that are, are really good, show a lot of promise. We'll then take them and start seeing whether we can establish them by seed, over sowing seed onto the full country. In the herbs we've put in plantain and chicory. Both plantain and chicory react very much like they are weeds, and, and that's basically what they were, but uh, they're very good weeds. On this class of country, if you've got a little bit of moisture and the seed has got some contact with the soil, both those herb species will germinate very, very quickly and come up to a seedling. So, Again, one of the successes, I guess you'd say, has been the establishment of both the plantain and chicory in these environments. It is very early days and I make no apologies for concentrating on the legume component of this trial because to me legumes are, are all important for this uncultivatable hill country for the quality and the nitrogen fixation. And it, it certainly, uh, some of the species, of the, the higher level species, uh, things like red clover have been very impressive. Uh, some of the lotus species have also been very impressive. So uh, there are some things there that are, are looking quite, quite encouraging. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.